Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin. Thanks for joining us today and choosing our channel to uh, enjoy coin entertainment and education and everything. And please hit the old like button and comment. We're about to talk about something really, really different. Uh, and this is about to get couched in a different conversation than you've probably heard it before. This is called a uh, Fujio Cent, and uh, they're dated 1787. And this is oftentimes called the first U.S. coin produced. Now, of course, sometimes you'll be referring to the first U.S. coin produced by the U.S. Mint. But as you'll reference, not only in the Red Book and other areas when it gets to the Fujio Coppers, that uh, it is considered the first under any U.S. authority uh, because they were made under contract for by uh, James Jarvis, owner and controlling interest of uh, the Connecticut Mint. My favorite thing about this is that when striking it, um, Jarvis obtained the federal contract with a $10,000 bribe to Colonel William Dewar. Could you imagine how much 10 grand was back then? Then the head of Board of Treasurer. Can we all just take a moment to stop and just recognize that humanity really hasn't changed much or at all? So there's a lot, a lot of varieties, and we're going to unpack a little bit of that today as we look at this, because the Red Book's a starting point, but then I've got another book to show you that you're really going to be, I think, somewhat intrigued by. All right, so here we go with uh, the word Fugio, and then you have the clock, also known as a sundial, and the sun. And these were prepared with lots of different dyes, and that gets to how people collect these. Most of them, they were produced in 1788, but dated 1787. Mind your business. Mind your business. Kind of have to think about how that comes across, because that actually means something a little bit different than how it might be stated today. And it actually says, United States, we are one. And then you had 13 rings representing the 13 colonies. And uh, so you talk about a coin that has a lot of meaning to it. This PCGS piece is graded XF45. Uh, States United for Sync. That is t sort of a, a type of the variety, but you can actually get into more detail than that. Uh, Fugio. Uh, meaning uh, time flies. And so it's very interesting just to kind of think about what were they meaning when they said time flies and mind your business. Uh, so you have to think of mind your business more as tend to your affairs, take care of the things that are in front of you. Time goes quickly, don't waste it. You know, so some of these things that you may think of kind of a Ben Franklin esque kind of commentary. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of sentiment of putting your nose to the grindstone and working hard. And that is really the beginning of a lot of what has been considered over time to be the American work ethic. And you can see it here from its colonial roots, just talking about keep working hard and pushing forward. Now, sometimes I bring out books, the Fujio Sense book. Uh, actually by a Colony Coin Company. A uh, very interesting book, which has something in it that some of you guys are going to nerd out on. So anyways, it has, it has a lot of the major types, and it talks about the major types. And, you know, you've got all kinds of diddle, little different varieties, or diddle different varieties, however you want to speak. But what's most interesting to me is that you've got this flow chart in the middle of the book that starts off of the ornament uh, over the word I and based on whether it's centered, left of center, left, right of center, or right. Then you get into the main flow chart and look at this guys. You want to figure out which variety it is. Now I kind of think that almost all coins should have a flow chart like this. <laughs> This is maybe your org structure, structure looks like this, but based on 
where you're starting out with it left of center, right, right of center, or centered. Then you have yes or no questions talking about other design elements, things like the right upright of the N is over the center of the U, yes or no, no, Y in your is centered directly. So these flow charts are, are really fascinating. There's also reverse varieties with states to the right. There's this club, uh, club ray obverse dive varieties. So there's lots and lots of little dive varieties, <laughs> little dive varieties. There are a lot of dive varieties. And so if you prefer, you can go ahead and use something like a, uh, some of the images in the back that show some of those dive varieties again to kind of get you to understand better what they mean when they're talking about the different dyes. If you take the time to read through all that, it will make sense when you start looking at where is the eye under the center, is the eye located relative, to, where is the little ornament relative to the eye, left of center, centered, right of center, way left of center. And so you start to understand some of the placement stuff that they've used to kind of teach you where things are. Now, full disclosure, if you didn't notice on this coin, uh, it had, as, as I go farther back, um, they have rarity tables, by the way, in this book, which is pretty cool. Uh, and they have die breaks, so reverse die breaks. They have obverse die breaks. So really, really, this coin had a die break on it, which allowed me to cheat uh, in the process of looking up the variety because it's got this nice major die break that runs thus. And so that is 8x. So when was this book published? Let me see here if we've got some information on here that I can help you all out with. Alan Kessler, um, let me see what do we got going on here. Come on now. Usually that's where the that's where the date should be, right? Ah, okay, 1976, y'all. 1976, pretty good year, pretty good year. All right, so anyways, these guys trade uh, in this condition for about two grand. Um, this one has all kinds of fun stuff going on, but there's that die break I was talking about. You can see it coming through here. Up and now you can only imagine how fun it is to try to collect these by die variety. Once you get that book, and you start seeing just how far off everything is shifted. At a glance, they almost all look the same, but up close, they almost all look completely different because there's just all kinds of varieties for this. And uh, we are one. There you go, guys. United States of America, 13 original colonies. Cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.